Okay, sun is up, I am charging. Two things going on in my system that I want to show you, uh, which is very important for off-grid solar. If you have a, a battery bank and you have solar panels and you're transferring power from your system to power your house mains or take circuits off like I do with my transfer panel over there. Alright, let's get right to it. And the reason why I'm doing this video is, is pretty simple. You want to charge up your battery bank to full charge every day. You go from a bulk state to an absorbed state to a float state. Okay, and that's the whole goal. And I know it's winter, winter time and it's very difficult for a lot of us who do off-grid solar to get a full charge on your battery bank. But uh, you want to try to get your batteries up to full charge every day if you can. Uh, and then reset you know, your, your system for that, you know, your state of charge. But what I'm going to show you is the Whizbang Junior screen on the 150 up here, which I have it hooked up. I don't have a Whizbang hooked up to the Classic 200 down here. Uh, that's on my Sun Power Array, 1,300 watts, and I've got 2,400 watts on this solar charge controller here. But what I'm going to show you is what's going on, essentially how much current I'm pulling off the batteries, and then how much PV input power I'm getting in going going into the system. It's kind of a push-pull effect here. And I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions to help you out. So, But let's take a look at the nitty-gritty, groovy kind of stuff here. This screen right here is the Whizbang Junior and Shunt screen. As you can see, it is pulling 12 amps off my batteries. That's pulling off my batteries. That's not going into the batteries. That's, that's what the load is on my system. And I don't have much going on in the house right now. So that equates to DC watts, about 300 watts. You multiply 12 times your voltage and that's how you get your watts. Okay. And as I said, I look at this every single day to see how much current draw I'm getting and how much current I'm getting in. Now, take a look at this. Okay, you go back to the main screen here. I'm getting 21 amps in on this charge controller. On this charge controller, which I don't hook, have hooked up to the Whizbang system, it's 8.2, so I'm getting, let's say, about 29, 30 amps at quarter to 10 in the morning, which is good, which is good. I'm off-grid right now. I'm, I'm inverting. Life is good. But, see, my battery voltage is at 25.5, and the whole deal, like I said before, was to get these batteries charged up. This thing needs to go up to 28.8, 29 volts and hold for about an hour in absorption mode and then it's in float and then once you hit float you're good to go. It's just taking whatever you harvest from the sky and using it. But uh, the whole goal is to make enough power to do two things and that would be to make enough solar power in your system here to charge your battery bank. Okay, And at the same time you're pulling energy off the battery bank and inverting it. And the way I have mine hooked up is the inverter is hooked up to the transfer panel over here and I take the essential circuits off the mains which is essentially everything I use in the house, probably 95 percent I use off the transfer panel. 120 volts uh, equipment and appliances and fridge and microwave and all that stuff. So the whole objective is, you know, while you're charging up, <clears throat> you know, be conservative not to uh, draw too many amps off your battery bank while you're charging. And <laughs> another fun thing that I, I do too is, like on a day like today, when it's, you got full sun, I really could care less uh, about that because <clears throat> during full sun, you know, yeah, you run the vacuum cleaner, yeah, you run the microwave, yeah, make coffee, do whatever you want to do. But uh, I could care less because it has enough power to do that. Because, you know, after five minutes of making coffee or whatever, you're, you're back up into making power and 
charging up system. So something that a lot of us who do off-grid solar consider, and, I, and like I said, I check this every single day to uh, ensure that I get a full charge on the batteries. As you know, I've got eight Trojan L16 EACs in here with room for four more, which I'll get after Christmas because I got a money's tight this time of year for everybody. Uh, so there you have it. And also, just a last note here: these Outback Power. The this is the VFX 3524. This has a charger function in it. I have yet to figure. <laughs> Yet to figure out how to do this properly and make it autonomous, where if my battery voltage goes low, that the charger function automatically turns back on and charges everything up. Uh, I'll figure it out. I've called tech support a couple of times, and they've given me some really good advice, but I, it's still not working the way I think it should. Or maybe I'm doing something wrong, which is probably the truth. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so to wrap this up, this is something that I check every single day is to make sure my current going out of the battery bank is lower than what I get coming in. And that's how you charge your battery. And I know it's winter time and it's pain in the ass to, to make solar power with the angles and the amount of sunlight we have this time of year. But very important to keep the, the battery bank charged up in the winter time just in case something happens and oh yeah last thing is the battery this box I made was for safety so I don't drop a tool you know between the neck between the negative and the positive terminals and have a 10,000 amp arc welder and fire and explosion <laughs> so safety first this is a safety box with a little bit of vent ventilation in there I've got the water miser caps in there which trap a lot of the gassing in here I have no worries about explosions and hydrogen leak in here and another thing I do since this is a big garage with a lot of open open air in here I have a ventilation fan rigged up right here too so the hydrogen gas <laughs> as little as it is if there's any is it's not going to sit there and just you know make like a big Hindenburg effect and and then you light a cigarette and boom it explodes if it's trapped yeah it can do that but if you're venting and you got a wide open space it's hydrogen I mean it's gonna go straight up to the roof and just dissipate quicker than you can imagine hydrogen is is uh, lighter than air gas so just want to throw that out there guys hey thanks for watching and listening to me ramble on here about charging and discharging and all that good stuff so have a good one and we'll see you later <laughs>